Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Really great to see all of you to, uh, to fellowship with one another and to worship God this morning. Hope you all are doing well uh, today. As we begin our worship service, first let me say, if there are any visitors amongst us, we're really glad you're here especially. Uh, you're, we consider you an honored guest. And if you're comfortable filling out a connection card that should be in the back of the pew in front of you, we'd really uh, appreciate that. Uh, but as we move into worship for this morning, uh, we're going to begin with a scripture reading that Liam Wanzowski will have for us, and then uh, Davin will lead us in our first song, and then our brother Taylor McCracken will be leading us in singing. Uh, he, he's expressed interest in doing it. This will be his first time to lead singing here, uh, so really excited for that, and uh, encourage all of us to sing out and worship God uh, and to clear our minds as we approach his throne together this morning. So uh, we'll begin first with our scripture reading by uh, Liam. Today I will be reading Corinthians chapter 15, verses 8 through 11. Last of all, he showed, he, he showed himself to me as a, as, as a, he showed himself to me as to a person not born at the normal time. All the other apostles are greater than I am. This is because I persecuted the church of God. And this is why I am not even good enough to be called an, an apostle. But God's grace has made me what I am, and his grace was not wasted. I worked harder than all the other apostles. But I was not really the one working. It was God's grace that was with me. So then, if it, it is not important if I preach to you or if the other apostles preach to you. We all preach the same thing, and this is what you believed. Today we'll be... Or today we'll be singing Love, Love, pages 873. Love, 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 the gospel. this morning a lot of the songs we'll be singing have to do with God's grace so just keep that in mind as we sing it out he leadeth me <clears throat> he leadeth me oh blessed thought oh words with heavenly comfort from whatever I do Oh. 
please bow with me. Our most gracious and loving God, Lord, we gather here today for one purpose, Lord, and that is to serve you and to give you glory. Lord, we ask that you go with us through this service. We ask that you receive our praise and you receive our worship in a way that's meaningful to you. Lord, we pray for uh, Lee as he brings us our message today, that each one of us has open, he open ears and open hearts and receives what we need to hear from it. Lord, we ask that you will go with us through this week as we uh, continue to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, give us strength, give us encouragement as we go forward. Lord, today we also want to thank you for men like Taylor, men who step up to the plate, men who uh, are good examples for your kingdom in the church, for young men abroad. Lord, we ask that you will uh, be with us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 732, we praise thee, O God. Let's stand if it's convenient, please. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. number would be familiar. They've been around for a while. First started, I think, with a book, and they're pretty popular by now because they've been around for a while. Uh, the five love languages, the five, it began as, as uh, I think, about, you know, married relationships and things, but it really extends to all kinds of relationships, uh, all kinds of uh, connections we have with people. The five ways that, that people express love and receive love, according to this uh, scheme here, the, the five love languages are quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, acts of service, and giving gifts. That's a pretty good list. I think all of us can probably identify with at least one of those. And I won't name any names here because I, I don't want to embarrass anyone or anything like that, but I think we all know we have some really thoughtful gift givers in our church family. Uh, and I know that because Kelsey and I have been recipients of uh, those gifts at different times, and I've also seen the way that they give gifts to others. Uh, and many of you gave some very generous gifts to Kelsey and I just last weekend at our baby shower, and we're very uh, thankful for that. We have some truly amazing, thoughtful gift givers here. 
I'm not a particularly great gift giver. <laughs> According to those five love languages, I'm more of a, a words of affirmation and, and quality time type of person. And so I am so amazed at the thoughtfulness that can go into gift giving. Uh, gift givers, people who are naturally good at giving love that way, showing love that way, uh, they will think of some very creative, very personal gifts that are so thoughtful and that I just never would have come up with uh, on my own. And I mention here gifts and gift givers because I think that this will help us appreciate the next expression of the love of God that we're going to be looking at this morning, and that's the grace of God, the grace of God. When we think of the grace of God, probably one of the first things that we think about is something like the picture that's the image for our theme for this year. Uh, one of the first things we probably think about is the cross and the atonement for sin that, uh, that occurred there. And that's a good thing, that that's where our minds first turn. The Apostle Paul talks about how while it's true that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, we are all also justified by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, because God put forward Christ to atone for our sins through the shedding of his blood. Uh, another way to sum that up, a way to, to summarize what, what Paul is saying there, is the cross is an expression of, and it is a work of, God's grace. Grace is something that we tend to often closely associate with mercy. Uh, maybe we even associate them so closely that uh, we use those two words interchangeably. We use them to talk about uh, the same thing. And the New Testament often puts those two words very close together as well. And I've got a couple of examples on the screen behind me. Uh, grace and mercy are not precisely the same thing, uh, but they are, of course, closely related. And we won't be focusing on the mercy of God this morning, but we will uh, later on in the future. But something I think that can help us appreciate grace is how closely tied it is to gift giving. The very word in our New Testament that we translate grace can also sometimes be translated as gift. Sometimes that word can be translated that way. I've got one example on the screen behind me from 1 Corinthians 16. Uh, Paul talked there about the financial collection that he was taking up among different churches to help the church in Jerusalem. And he told the Corinthians that he would send the people that the Corinthians chose themselves to carry their gift, their grace, to Jerusalem. It's the same word, but he would carry their gift to Jerusalem. Back in Romans 3, that passage that I mentioned just a moment ago, Paul comes right out and says, we're justified by God's grace as a gift. Justified by God's grace as a gift. Now those are, in that instance, two different words for gift and grace. Uh, but the phrase, as a gift, is there to draw out just how gracious God has been in sending Jesus to us. And so those two words are getting at the same concept, and that's gracious giving. When we talk about and when we reflect on the grace of God, we're talking about a God who excels at giving gifts. And again, he's given us the greatest gift of all in Christ. But the gift of Christ is not just the greatest because it results in things like the forgiveness of our sins and, and eternal life, although that's certainly reason enough for it to be the greatest gift. But the gift of Christ is also a gift that really bursts open the floodgates, so to speak. Uh, this is a gift that allows for so many other gifts to then follow in its wake and really flood our lives with good things. God gives many gifts to his children. And all those gifts are expressions of his grace. So Paul says at the beginning of Ephesians that God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. So here's Paul saying exactly what I was, I was getting at. Here we see how the gift of Christ opens the floodgates up to receive more gifts and to receive more grace from God. Every spiritual blessing is found in Christ. And Paul was aware of this in his own life. Uh, he knew that the grace of God not only saved him from sin, but the grace of God kept on giving, and it gave him a whole new life. And so listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians 15. This was part of our uh, scripture reading that Liam read for us at the beginning of service. Paul says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. 
On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, talking about the other apostles, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. So Paul understood that the grace of God was motivating uh, his work. It was behind his work for the gospel. It wasn't actually him at work. It was actually the grace of God. He says the same thing in Ephesians 3. Uh, it was a gift of God's grace, not only that he had been saved, but that he had been given the mission of sharing the good news of Jesus with the Gentiles. This was also a gift of God's grace. So Paul knew this about his own life. And Paul knew that this wasn't something that was just unique to him in his life. All Christians received God's grace, not only in salvation, but they received God's grace in so many other ways as well. So when he writes about our spiritual gifts, the different ways that uh, we've been blessed to contribute to the Lord's body, he says that our gifts differ according to the grace given to us. When he writes to the Corinthians and encourages them to give generously for that collection that I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, he tells them that God is able to make all grace abound to them, which means they will have everything that they need. God will graciously provide for them. We also are vessels of God's grace. Paul teaches us to speak words that will give grace to those who hear. So we serve a God who is abundantly gracious, who gives us all kinds of good things. And it is through Christ that, uh, that all those rich uh, spiritual gifts come. God does not just give us salvation and then say, all right, I've given you that gift. Now you're on your own. That's not the way God loves us. That's not the way he relates to us. He gives us that gift and then he keeps on giving. His goodness keeps on abounding to us in all kinds of ways. And notice something with me about these gifts that we've just been reading about and that have been on the screen behind me. Are these gifts that are just meant for us to receive and enjoy and say, okay, that was nice. It was nice to get that gift. Uh, and then we just keep on living. We just keep on going business as usual. Is that the way God's gifts are? Or are they kind of like the stocking stuffers on Christmas Day that are nice to get, but we don't really necessarily need them all that bad and we, we really could just do without the stocking stuffers and life would be great. Is that the way God's gifts work? Of course not. Uh, God's gifts are more than just gifts because God gives us more than just grace. God, or God's grace does more than just give. God's grace also empowers us and equips us. And so when he gives us gifts, his gifts empower us. And so this is why Paul says that as we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, he says, let's use them. This, this gift actually empowers you to do something. This is made even more clear in Ephesians when Paul is talking about those same spiritual gifts. He talks about how Christ ascended to heaven and then he gave gifts to people. And then he goes on and he lists some of those gifts. And at the end, he says that those gifts are meant to equip the saints. They're meant to equip us for ministry. They're meant to build up the body and help us grow and mature. In other words, these gifts empower and equip. Back in 2 Corinthians, when Paul was talking about that collection, he said that God will make his grace abound towards us. And he says his grace will abound so that we may abound in every good work. God equips us to do good. And Paul also told Timothy to be strengthened by God's grace that is found in Christ Jesus. Grace was meant to strengthen and empower him. So these gifts empower and they equip. And if that's the case with all these gifts that are found in Christ, then it must be the case with that gift that opened up those floodgates, right? It, it, that must also be the case with the gift of Christ himself. The gift of Christ empowers us. And sure enough, that is what we see in Scripture. A few chapters later in Romans, after Paul already said in chapter 3 that we are justified by God's grace as a gift, he then says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ because the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus. The gift of Christ breaks chains. It sets free from bondage, and it gives us a new lease on life. 
And Paul goes on in the verses right after this in Romans 8 uh, to describe that new life as walking or living not by the flesh. That's the way Paul says we used to live. That's the way the world lives. Uh, but walking and living by the Spirit. And he even says, while he's talking about all that, how to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. That's empowerment. The grace of God is not just meant to forgive us and, and clean us up when we sin, although it certainly does that. It is meant to clean us up, make us new, and then fuel us. It's meant to charge us up to live a new life. And we receive that empowerment when we become Christians. And we continue to receive that new life through the grace of God that keeps on giving as we're living the Christian life. That's what God wants for you. And that's what God wants for me. That's what God wants for all of us. He wants to give you and me a whole new life. And he wants to give us what we need to live that new life. And so as we read his word and learn about his ways, he doesn't just want us to know that we could love our neighbors more. We all know that. But he wants us to actually experience what it means to love other people the way he does. He wants us to know the goodness that comes from letting all that we do be done in love. He wants to see us overcome the cycles of sinful habits that we can fall into. And certainly he wants to forgive us when we do fall, but he also wants to go beyond that. He wants to step alongside us and help us move beyond those things so that we can know the life and peace that is found in truly walking by the Spirit. If our mental health is struggling, he wants us to get the help that we need. He wants to open doors so that we can access that help. Uh, he wants to be there with us and comfort us, uh, but he also doesn't want us to stay in anxiety and despair. He wants to help us uh, move forward. God, in his love for us, in his grace for us, he reaches out a hand to us and he says, here, I, I know that living in this fallen world is hard. He, he says, I've lived in it myself and I know you may be feeling overwhelmed I know you may not know what to do next, but here, take my hand. I'm going to be with you. We're going to walk this journey together, and I'm going to provide you everything you need for it. That is what grace looks like. Grace redeems, empowers, and equips. It is grace that picks us up when we fall down. It's grace that renews us when we're discouraged. It's by the grace of God that, like Paul says, it's by the grace of God that we are who we are. So when we're struggling, maybe we're struggling with sin, maybe we're struggling with discouragement, or maybe, maybe we're just having a really hard day. But when we're struggling, it's appropriate to ask God to give us the grace needed for the present moment. That's another way of asking God to come alongside us, give us what we need, and empower us. We do that when we ask him for the grace needed for the present moment. Amen. And so let's make that a regular prayer of ours. God is the best gift giver. He's given us not only salvation, but a whole new life in Christ. And he gives us moment by moment what we need to live that new life. And that's available to us because he loves us. That's how his grace works. And so let's ask for that grace and let's receive it today. This morning, if you would like to receive that grace, that empowerment to live a whole new life for the very first time, uh, every Lord's Day we extend the invitation to come to Christ in faith and repentance, be buried with him in baptism and raised to live a whole new life. Uh, or this morning, if you have any other need, we encourage you to come while together we stand and while uh, Taylor leads us in our song of invitation. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring on my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me, he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied. Yeah. 
Let me like Mary through 
this time is set aside for our communion services upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. This is found in Acts 20, verse 7. Some of you may call it the Lord's Supper. Some may call it the Last Supper. But as Jesus sat at the head of the table with his disciples to celebrate their first feast of unleavened bread. But little did they know, that's the disciples, little did they know, this was their last and final meal with Jesus before his crucifixion. And what I want to do at this time, if you'd be so kind to turn your minds back to the old cruel cross of Calvary, picture that in your mind. We're going back to the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. We're going to be looking at verses 7 through 9. There it reads, before his, before his crucifixion. He was oppressed. He was despised. He was afflicted, rejected. And he was bruised. And can you imagine, he was bruised by his own people. His own people did that to him. Verse 9. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no wrong neither were there any deceit found in, in his mouth. Again, the most people that hurt us is our people. And that's what Christ, that's what he went through with. And you might ask me, how can someone be mistreated like that and still love someone? Our theme this year is love. That's why 1 John 4, verse 10 and 11 talks about God is love. Since God is so loving, why don't we love one another? That's what this is all about this morning. Our theme is true. We need to love one another. But I want to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 28. And the writer says in that verse, we have to examine ourselves to see if we are in compliance with Jesus' teaching and loving. In other words, let's take a spiritual inventory of ourselves and see if we are loving like Jesus loved. And I want to leave with this. Are we loving like Jesus loved? Will you love me tomorrow like you love me today? Because it's easy to love someone in a loving environment, isn't it? But when you go out of that environment, <coughs> is it easy to love? That's what this is all about this morning. Let us pray. Our Father God, we do thank you for this wonderful, blessed day you have given us to enjoy. We thank you this time for this loaf that represents our Lord's broken body. And we pray at this time you'll be taken with clean hands and pure hearts so there be no condemnation on us in this life, neither the life to come. We ask you blessings in Christ's name. Amen. That scripture tells us in that same passage, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you, as often you drink this in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for this shed blood. Our Father God, again, we do thank you for this great day. A great day that you've given us to enjoy. The sunshine. But let us not forget the rain as well because you know what's good for all of us. We pray at this time that this fruit of the vine will be taken with clean hands and pure hearts as well. That there will be no condemnation on us in this life, neither the life to come. We ask these blessings in Christ's name. Amen. We come down to another part of our services concerning giving. We are truly, truly blessed to live in a country where we can sing God bless America. That's a great saying, and that's true in this United States of America. Yes, we are truly blessed to be blessed. The book of Genesis talks about blessing. 
if we are blessed, let us bless those that cannot bless themselves or give to themselves. We also give upon the first day of the week. We don't give monthly, quarterly, we annually, but we give the first day of the week as well. First Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Upon the first day of the week, let us lay by store as he has prospered us. Lee gave a scripture this morning. I would like to quote that scripture. Every spiritual blessing is found where? In God. Every spiritual blessing is found in God. Our collection trays are here at the front and also in the rear. At this time, let us give God for the blessings he's going to bestow upon us today and also a little more blessings that's going to be coming forth sooner or later. Let us give, at this time, God's blessings. Our Father God, as we approach your throne of grace this morning, we thank you for your love, kindness. We thank you for your mercy that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us, and we thank you, dear God, for future blessings as well. And as we collect these collections this morning, we pray to be used in a manner pleasing our sight, and thus for the building of our kingdom and of saving souls. We ask you blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I want to say thank you to everyone who helped lead our hearts and minds in worship, and thank you all for being here. hope today has been a rich blessing to you. Just a few announcements before we're led in our closing song and then dismissed with a word of prayer uh, that I have to make. One is uh, we will have our, our Sunday evening Bible study tonight at 5 o'clock. We didn't have one last week, uh, but we'll resume that tonight to talk more about uh, the grace of God. I'm excited about that and encourage you to be here uh, for that time of, of reading God's word and discussing it uh, together. Uh, also coming up uh, really soon is the last leaders in Louisville, March 29th through 31st. Uh, and so if uh, you are participating, we all hope that you do well. We all hope that you're blessed through doing that. And I want to encourage everyone to reach out to those who will be part of that and uh, just give them a word of encouragement, let them know that you appreciate their heart and their, uh, their desire to do this. And we will be praying for their safe travels as they go uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, another thing that will be coming up soon on the calendar on April 7th, uh, we'll have during Sunday morning Bible class a special presentation by the president of the Nicaragua Christian School. Uh, he'll be here to give presentation here and a couple other congregations as well. Uh, he's actually good friends of Kelsey and I, so we're excited to see him and his wife. Uh, but they'll be here during Bible class to make a presentation about that work that they do, and then they'll stay here to worship with us as well. So I encourage you to, to be here during Bible class to hear about uh, this, this great work that they're a part of and also to make them feel welcome uh, while they're here. Um, I have one other announcement. I understand that we have a birthday girl in our midst today. Uh, on any given week throughout the calendar, we have someone who has a birthday, but it's always great when, when their birthday is on the day that we're gathered together. So that's Miss Chastity who has a birthday today. Uh, I think it'd be appropriate for us to take a second and show our appreciation by singing a little round of happy birthday. So <laughs> sing with me for a second. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Chastity is a great servant of the Lord, a great example for all of us here, and so uh, be sure to, to express uh, how much you appreciate her today and for all the work that she does for the Lord. Um, th so those really are all the announcements that I'm aware of. Are there any others that I've overlooked that need to be made before we dismiss? Okay. Well, thank you again so much for being here. I uh, hope you all have a blessed rest of the day. We'd love to see you tonight if you're able to be here for our Bible study. Uh, if you would be standing, this time Taylor will lead us in our closing song, and then we'll have uh, Brother Charles, lead us in our closing prayer. Number 36, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me.
sunshine. Father, we're looking for a little bit warmer weather. But Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all your blessings you give us. We pray for those who's traveling today and that you bring them back to us safely. We pray for those who's hurting and sick and you just heal them and let, let them and comfortable, Lord. And bring them back to us the next point in time. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all your blessings. We pray for the church around the world that that we do as much as we can to continue to serve you and, and further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is <laughs> that 